Secretary of State Dulles takes the rostrum to urge united action by the Americas to outlaw international communist intervention in the Western Hemisphere. This conference was shocked by the dastardly attack on members of the United States Congress by those who professed to be patriots. They may not themselves have been communists, but they had been subjected to the inflammatory influence of communism, which avowedly uses extreme nationalism as one of its tools. During World War II, American President Franklin Roosevelt promoted democracy in Latin America to ensure these nations remain allied with the United States. This allowed the people of Guatemala to improve their standard of living by slowly reforming their feudal plantation system established by Spanish colonizers and later exploited by American corporations. This threatened profits for United Fruit, a huge American corporation that dominated politics in Central America. It quietly demanded action by the United States, labeling popular economic reforms communism. The CIA developed a plan that was approved by the American president. In 1954, the popular democratically elected president of Guatemala was ousted in a violent coup, leading to decades of turmoil and violence. In the November 1950 elections, Jacobo Arbenz won the Guatemalan presidency with 65% of the vote. Arbenz extended the economic reforms begun under the previous progressive president and began a redistribution of land to poor peasants. 2% of the Guatemalan population owned 72% of the arable land. Of this privately held land, less than 12% was under cultivation. The poor had no money to buy land from the wealthy who had inherited land they didn't even use. Enacted in June 1952, Arben's popular agrarian reform law empowered the government to expropriate uncultivated portions of large plantations with owners compensated based on their own self-declared values used to determine property taxes. President Arben's, who was a major landowner through his wife, gave up 1,700 acres of land. During the first 18 months, the Agarian Reform Program awarded 1.5 million acres of unused land to some 100,000 peasant families. Among the lands expropriated were 400,000 acres belonging to the powerful American Fruit Company, now known as Chiquita. The government of Guatemala offered United Fruit $627,000 in compensation. The U.S. State Department demanded 24 times that amount. The involvement of the U.S. government occurred because U.S. Secretary of State John Foster Dulles and his brother, CIA Director Alan Dulles, had both worked for a New York law firm that represented United Fruit. The Dulles brothers accused the Guatemalan government of being a stooge of the Soviets by implementing a communist program. American government officials warned of communist aggression in Guatemala, although the Soviet Union was not involved. In September 1952, American President Harry Truman considered a covert CIA plan, codename PB Fortune, to overthrow the Guatemalan government. Truman never approved, since Arbenz government was popular and a coup unlikely to succeed without overt American military support. President Dwight Eisenhower, entered office in January 1953 and revived the plan, renamed PB Success. $2.7 million was allocated to begin the effort with covert actions involving psychological warfare, subversion, and assassinations. With financial enticements and propaganda against godless communism, the CIA recruited some 500 Guatemalans to include some former military officers. They were housed, fed, trained, and armed at secret bases in Honduras, Nicaragua, and El Salvador, countries ruled by CIA-supported dictators. The CIA provided their Guatemalan rebels with rifles, submachine guns, mortars, bazookas, grenade launchers, and ammunition. 
The CIA purchased 30 older planes using foreign aid funds to support their invasion to be flown by American pilots. In May 1954, the Eisenhower administration launched its coup that included assassinating 58 government officials, while radio propaganda warned of Soviet agents coordinating arms shipments to Guatemala. The world's press was provided with film of communist-supplied weapons and personnel who were actually the CIA mercenaries preparing to overthrow the democratically elected government of Guatemala. Propaganda broadcast informed the Guatemalan people that patriots led by rebel military officers were on the march to oust their communist government. CIA aircraft flying from Honduras began bombing and strafing government facilities. The Eisenhower administration began a worldwide disinformation campaign warning of a communist menace in Guatemala to rally support for the rebels. The Guatemalan foreign minister appealed to the United Nations to investigate evidence of foreign air attacks on his nation, but efforts were blocked by the United States. The CIA's 500-man mercenary army was much smaller than the Guatemalan army, and a successful coup was not certain. President Arbenz learned that his military officers were panicked and demoralized as ships with U.S. Marines appeared offshore, ready to intervene. Arbenz sought refuge in the Mexican embassy as his army stood aside, allowing CIA mercenaries led by former Army officer Castillo Armas to assume power. Castillo Armas, shown here next to the driver, paraded into Guatemala City and assumed power. Street protests erupted in Guatemala and several Latin American nations by people not fooled by another example of American imperialism. The American media told its citizens that these protests were signs of the growing communist threat in Latin America. Less than a month after the coup, Armas announced the death penalty for government opponents that included union organizers. Critics were arrested while Armas reversed land reforms and restricted the right to vote to literate citizens. Dictator Armas was invited to the White House in November 1955 and given a hero's welcome. At a state dinner, Vice President Richard Nixon described him as, quote, a courageous soldier who had led the Guatemalan people in revolt against communist rule. In truth, Armas was a puppet that the United States used to overthrow a popular democratically elected president who had threatened American corporate interests. This resulted in decades of civil war and brutal state violence where a succession of repressive military regimes in Guatemala killed more than 100,000 civilians and fueled mass immigration to the United States. In 